What's up, guys? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and I'm over here with Tom Ellsworth, uh, otherwise known as The Biz Doc. You've seen him on the PVD podcast and also on the Biz Doc series on Valuetainment. And, uh, yeah, I've always I followed Tom Ellsworth's material and, and stuff on YouTube and everywhere else for a long time, and we finally got him on the podcast. So it's been it's a real honor to have him on, and this is someone I look up to with everything business. I love the way he presents and explains everything it's just pretty awesome so tom how's it going it's going great hello from fort lauderdale glad to be on here and thank you for watching us appreciate that you uh you check us out and follow us in valuetainment we're just uh trying to provide stuff that helps awesome awesome so tom i saw a lot of your short form content out and uh it's just it's good stuff so you were you were mentioning recently about people not paying down credit and debt now versus the pandemic. And also I wanted to get your thoughts on commercial real estate and office real estate now. I mean, how maybe the banks are tied into that. What kind of, you know, what, what do you think is, uh, is, uh, you know, we're facing in, in the near future. I'm sorry. So we'll start with, so I, I dug up some statistics and I like to follow the consumer debt trends, like how much consumer debt there was. And at the beginning of the pandemic, when they put out stimulus checks, consumer debt was edging up toward $700 billion. Now, this is credit card debt. And when the stimulus checks came out, that backed up a little bit to like 600. And depending on who you look at, there was a couple charts that, uh, that came out from reputable sources. This is not like just a financial pundit on um, Twitter. These were, I'm looking at sources from... Uh, you know, the Fed from Fred and and other you know government and, and but me, by the way, maybe a pundit on Twitter is better than government. I don't know. Um, and so one of the things I saw was that over the with the inflation of the last eighteen months, we're almost at a trillion dollars in credit card debt, which is a crazy figure to think about. And people are not paying down. In fact, I read one um, story that of the people that uh, got a new mortgage in 2022 or the first quarter of 23, some of them actually used um, a cash advance or savings to make a mortgage payment. Check that out. So the people that bought the house in 2022 at high interest rates, and high housing prices or Q1 of 23, it said 62% of them had a trouble at least once making a payment. And maybe they had to use a little savings in addition to their salary and you know the money they earned from work. And so all of this points to you know the consumer may be spending, but right now the consumer is is very stressed more than we think. And I and I think we're beginning to see it. And some of the other economic debt. I see. Wow. So this is a very problematic, it seems like. Okay. So, you know, so when I remember in, during the pandemic here in California, I know you used to be in California and in, in, I'm in LA. Uh, I remember like there was a rent was being paused and I don't even know what's going on with that anymore, but people were not even paying their rents and they were getting uh, stimulus checks, unemployment, and just m money that they saw that they can spend. It's like, for example, I trade stocks is what I do. And I noticed a lot of people, barbers, Uber drivers, they were getting their stimulus and unemployment, opening up a Robinhood account and trading it when they should have been, in my opinion, the whole time, I will talk about this with my friends, they should have been paying down their debt or they should have been doing something else that would be productive. So it seems like a lot of this behavior stacked up and then now it's now we're seeing the effect, the uh, the consequence of all this irresponsible behavior. Is that is that is that in line, kind of? I mean, what I'm thinking, you know. So, I agree with you a hundred percent. When people don't have money, first thing they do when they get a little bit of money is not save it. They spend it because they want to satisfy a desire. They want to have something. Oh my gosh, I can finally have something. And then they go back to having no money, and that's where they were. They go back to a credit card balance, that's where they were, and they don't worry about that. And they don't see 
that there is greater comfort and freedom in being debt free and able to do as, as you're doing, direct your excess money toward your future. That's not a feeling they're familiar with. So we look at it as irresponsible behavior. They look at it, man, I'm I'm dead broke. And they'll say it to you. I've been at Starbucks. I've heard people say this. I'm dead broke. I'm broke yesterday. I'm going to be broke tomorrow. And, and so I, you know what? So if it takes stimulus check, I didn't even have that money. You know, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go have some fun with it. And I'm like, they don't see that it's an opportunity to maybe change that condition. It is irresponsible behavior, David. They just don't see it that way. They need perspective. So, so here in California, in LA, for example, when when uh, I remember I was walking during, in the pandemic, I, I went for hikes and I listened to audiobooks and podcasts too. You guys podcast, and uh, I went to Echo Park to go see. I, I, I'm a I like architecture, so I used to see some architecture mid century homes and a hike to it because there's nothing to do during the pandemic. I remember seeing Echo Park people signs up on the poll saying, "Don't pay your rent." Because uh, rent's not, they're like ganging up not to pay the rent. And then, you you know, so it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, it's I think people weren't uh, financially literate or educated. I don't know the excuse, but it's just a, maybe it's a human nature thing. Like when people um, are, they see themselves, it's a mindset conditioning. They see themselves as broke and like they don't want to, they just can't see themselves breaking free from that. I don't know. It's just yeah. a bit, because this is all piled. I'm The way I see it, so we knew inflation was coming. We knew this was coming. I, I knew it was coming. It's like when a stock dilutes its shares, it becomes less, uh, you know, it's diluted. So we diluted the whole economy. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. Any any thoughts on that? You're exactly correct. That's exactly what happened. We diluted the economy. You know, it's like when you print all that money, any asset, has to be renormalized to its true value. So that's why a home, if you print, remember 40% of the money, remember it's not really printing, it's digital printing now, right? It's just the money flows out. But when you add that much money, 40% of the money that's ever existed in, in US dollars was printed or issued in the first two years of the pandemic, 40%. That's what these these trillions are. And so what happens is if these if this car is worth 10 grand, 40 percent more is 14. People go 10 to 14. They don't see ah, that's not too much. Ah, 10 to 14. Wow, that's expensive. Price went up. They don't they don't see it. I said, yeah, but you want to why? We have too much money in circulation now and the money's got to cover the true value of the asset. We're like, what? And I said, did you get a 40% raise? No. Welcome to inflation. And worse, wel welcome to asset revaluation because of what you did to the money supply. Very interesting. Yeah, you know, I, I went to the bank yesterday. I made a withdrawal and they gave me fresh. They said they had to like crumble it up. It was fresh $100 bills. I'd never seen that before. Like absolutely brand new from the printed. I don't know what, it, but uh, yeah, and I, the first thing I thought about was that like all this printed money. So not only, but well, you're saying digital print. It's not even physical printed anymore. It's digital printed in a ways of like lending out more loans or other various means. Is that how it works? I mean, is you don't you don't have to make all the bills. They don't. You know, they decide they're going to send you a stimulus check for a thousand bucks, thirteen hundred dollars. And it doesn't really come to you personally. It just goes to your bank account. So it's like, so they, they don't really print all the money. They issue it. And so, you know, it has the same effect. You've got all that money in circulation. And, you know, people go out and buy things. If the average profit on the stock market is 15% and you print a trillion dollars, that means $150 billion are going to come to retained earnings and profits on the stock market. Why? Because people took that trillion dollars and they spent it. And if the average profit is 15% on Wall Street, then in all those companies, Amazon, Microsoft, Hulu, whoever you spend it with, that money, 15% of it is now sitting on the balance sheet. And what happened to the stock market? 
the stock market is decoupled. You know this. I see where your cockpit there. I see what you're doing. Oh yeah. You know? It's pretty intense, yeah. Well, but you you see what's going on. Stock market is not representative of the economy or the condition of the citizens. Yeah, it's absolutely decoupled. not. Yeah. Yeah. It's like because what ha what happens when the tech companies make all those layoffs? For the next two earnings report, they're going to have an artificial process. And let's say their sales are level, but they've taken cost out of the business by these people they've laid off. And then they get to make an accounting rule adjustment on the, on the severance. Well, that means not this quarter, but next quarter, they're going to look more profitable and their stock is going up. What's happening in tech? So looking you back there, you follow the VIX, right? You look at the VIX yeah, and take yeah. a look at volatility. And you also probably look at VXN. The volatility of the Nas of the Nasdaq 100, correct? Uh I don't follow it directly, but I I, I glance at the VIX every now and then, as you know, as a gauge of temperature oh. of uh overall. So what's the VXN right now? Over or under twenty? VXN, I know the VIX is at thirteen fifty, thirteen sixty. VXN, oh, eighteen, eighteen sixty six, close today. Okay, well. And 20 is the bull bear line. And so right now, the VIX is bullish at 13. And the um, VXN is also bullish at 18. Yeah. So how can that be with all the layoffs and people not able to make their payments? The answer is the stock market is not connected to the average person. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so energy is like going because yeah. the Saudis are cutting production, and the, which means they're going to cause the price per barrel to go up. And so the American oil companies are going to hedge bet against that, and they'll raise it, let's see, for that much, probably 25 to 30 cents at the pump. Yeah. Wow. So, so where do you see this going from here? It's just got to run its course, or, you know, I know the, the politicians are always going to finagle their way out of it, massage their way out of it. A hard, a hard spot. Well, next week we have the Fed announcement, right? 13th, 14th, we have the Fed making an announcement next week, and they will also announce economic statistics. So I'm hoping the Fed doesn't raise interest rates, but I'm feeling like they've seen enough indicators that maybe they raise it another quarter point, because if they let it go and there's more bad news, then on uh, July 25th, 26th time frame, then I think they're going to raise it. But then I honestly think it's flat. I've been hoping it would be flat from now till December and then get a, a cut to end the year. Gotcha. Excellent thoughts. Now, final thoughts. Okay, so the, I mentioned the office space thing. So I mentioned that because I'm in the U.S. Bank Tower in uh, Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. And this is I've been here since 2020. And I was at another office building before that for a couple of years. And both of them are like 20% occupied. So, and I noticed this a lot of the areas, like there's the shoe guy. Did you, uh, lease, did you lease this or is this some other business? I, I leased this. This is a Regis office. That, uh, I took a lease in the Regis. You know Regis, the, the office uh, yeah, company? Yeah, absolutely. Very, very yeah, convenient. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to go long term. They actually bought out the WeWorks in the area. So WeWork is is like, it's basically about to go bankrupt or about to, their stock is absolutely worthless, like 16 cents right now. So, um. So Regis bought them out, but but and then this building has shifted owners a couple of times during the pandemic, and was sold like way below market price. So like you know, there's got to be a lot of bank loans and banks tied up in this, and the banks are crashing. So like I'm thinking, okay, um, if the banks are tied up in this and the banks are crashing, we have First Regional Bank, First I think First Republic Bank, SVB, the the scare is like contagion or like that kind of settled off already, but the the regional banks are still problematic and then now they the office buildings are all tied to it and everybody are is still kind of working from home or not showing up to work because like this building is empty the, the shoe guy downstairs um cnbc actually interviewed him the other day he had, he inherited his building from his 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 uh family his, his business from his family and he has no business he's about to go he's been in business for 50 years and he has no business nobody's fixing shoes anymore <laughs> so um, I want to see what your thoughts, your observations. I know you're in, you're in Florida. Maybe it's a little different, but um, overall, you know, the work from home, all these all these uh, behaviors from the pandemic 
are starting to catch up with us now. The work from home, the stimulus, all this wild spending, people going to uh, taking vacations to Miami and renting a Mustang for three days with their stimulus check. You know, <laughs> so well, all this is catching is, up. It's all about feeling. They want to go feel good. They don't see responsibility. They want to just feel good. Um, yeah. And I, I think they think the government's going to be there, do it again. The, the most terrible thing that could happen did happen to average Americans that didn't have any disciplines. They didn't have to pay rent because the government said so, and then they were given free money. It taught them nothing. What it taught them that, oh, wait a minute. If it gets bad enough, the government will just take care of it. Crazy. So tell me about you. You you day trade or you yeah, trend so trader? What what is your I, core? I am a short seller. I am one of the one of the few that will just say I only short sell. I only short sell. I'm a pure bear. Um I look for fraud, I look for bad companies, I look for um, you know, pump and dumps, I look for shady characters, I like justice, I don't like injustice, and I'm willing to go to the doorstep of these companies and 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 confront them firsthand and gather the the intel the evidence evidence to present for the uh, a report if necessary. So I'm known for uh one one big one a couple of years ago. Flora Growth is a Colombia marijuana cultivation company that was basically fake. And I went to Colombia. I flew in there direct flight. Took a motorcycle to go uh, expose it. It was uh, so I'm known for that. I'm known for a few others as well. But like I, I like to go after a lot of pump and dump artists. Which um recently they a few of them got arrested. I don't know if you you're probably not familiar, but it, there was a popular Twitter guy called Zach Morris. You know the Saved by the Bell character. He took the character's name and uh, pumped a lot of stocks, dumped a lot of stocks, and I would short I would short sell. But as I'm short selling, I'm I'm exposing. I'm being vocal about it. So I created the Friendly Bear podcast. Who it, because short sellers are usually hiding. So short sellers are scared to have a voice because they're considered like the evil or bad or whatever. But I consider myself like the Dark Knight, like the Batman of the short selling world. You know, like the, the Batman was considered um, bad at one point, evil, that they turned against him. And then they, they turned off the Batman signal. And then one day they, they, they thought the Joker was the good guy at one point. And then the Joker, you know, the Joker, they re people like realized, ah, Batman was right. Let's bring that bat signal back. Turn it on, you know, and then they brought Batman and then he's Batman. So I'm Batman. I see myself Bruce Wayne. I'm here in the in the cockpit and I'm short selling a lot of these things. And I've I actually we mentioned the pandemic in the pandemic. I didn't have uh, that's that's where I made uh, my, my success. I, I used a lot of good habits that I developed for many years uh, before that, three, three or four years before that. And, uh, you know, I got a stimulus check in the pandemic and I put it into my my education. My, I invested in myself, you know, so. You know, I I did the right things with um at the right time and it paid off. So, you know, I used that opportunity. But um, you know, because I, I had switched careers from um from architecture. So I wasn't so I'm one of these guys, I was stuck in a lot of student debt and I found a solution. I didn't I didn't have a victim mentality, you know. So I found a solution. I'm like, okay, this is a capitalist country. I know you guys are all about capitalism. I so am I. I'm like in a capitalist country and uh I can find a solution for this. My parents are both immigrants. My my dad is from Iran. My mother's from Cuba. So, you know, I can I, that's why I vibe with uh, Patrick a lot with what he has to say. And you know, they came with nothing, and I was born here in Miami. Actually, I was born where you guys are at, and uh, I have no excuse, you know. And I'm well educated, even though I have all these student loans. So there's there's a way to find a solution. So my solution was to uh, learn stock trading and specifically once i found out about short selling and pump and dumps it made a lot of sense to me about gravity having an effect on a temporary false run up that's manipulated and and i like that that the discovery putting the puzzle together of a of pump and dump artist like a person a bad guy behind it you know what i mean so i really <laughs> so it, it it works with my personality so like i i've done well for myself and um and i have a lot of goals you know and and uh yeah, I, it's all about feeding the right information in your head too. That's why I like your your guys' podcasts. I devour everything. I, I watch all the uh, PBD podcasts. I watch all of BizDoc. I watch all Valuetainment. The Saz cast, you know, it's I, I listen to a lot of it. The money stuff, it's a little bit like fresh and fit now, which is cool. It's just like you know, I got a lot of things to focus on. It's a lot of you know, it's it's 
talk I'm dealing with girls a lot too in real life. So it's like it's kind of you know, it's a little too much. <laughs> but but it's cool, you know. But yeah, that's that's my story in a nutshell. Hey. I love that story. And I, you know, I think it's a noble effort, you know, got a lot of people know. It's like that's how Madoff was found out. Somebody yeah. looked at it and said, This just doesn't how, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I I've I've devoured all the Madoff. I love history lessons, case studies. And uh yeah, Madoff is one of them for sure. I listen to a lot of stuff of audiobooks yeah. and podcasts. Absolutely. But yeah, Tom, um, any other last thoughts before we go? This is absolute pleasure to talk to you and get in touch with one of uh, the people I look up to, you know? Let's connect anytime. In the meantime, let's wait and see next week what happens with the Fed, you know, and see what those economic indicators say. And just remember, all the labor indicators from your government, 14 months in a row, they beat their labor number. How do they do it? They adjust it down right after they announce it. And then next time they beat that. So let's just remember, you know, when you look at your own government numbers, you can look around and you can see who's really working. You know, fly to Columbia, get on a motorcycle. You can see for yourself. Yeah, you got to see for yourself. All right, Tom. Well, that that's awesome right there. And uh, history doesn't repeat it, it, but it rhymes. Exactly. Definitely does. Okay. So have a great day, Tom. We'll, we'll, we'll connect soon. Take care.